Hey guys, this is Woodshop Junkies and today I'm going to continue making the most of my small shop by adding soft open and locking features to my ultimate space saver. If you are new to the series, my objective is to design and build a compact workspace where simple storage can be converted into a mini workshop. I'm also hoping that the design is adaptable for a range of different applications. Now ultimately when the project is finished, it's going to consist out of three separate multifunctional segments that are designed to operate individually but to complement each other when used together. For today's video, I want to focus on finishing up the center segment which is a wall mount cabinet that can double as a work surface. Now if you guys have any questions about the mechanism or any of the already installed components you can check out the description of this video I will add links to the videos where I built everything down below. Now I really like the concept but at this stage my design has two major obstacles to overcome. Firstly if control is not exercised when opening or closing the unit it can come crashing down potentially damaging the unit or injuring the user. So to overcome this I'm going to install gas struts or gas springs to give me a soft open feature but also to assist with the weight of the unit when it is being closed. The second obstacle is created by the pivot placement. I move the pivots back slightly so that applying pressure at this point would initiate the closing motion. But this creates a non-ideal situation for using it as a table. So I want to add locks to keep the unit in the work surface position when I want to use it. Right, so first up is installing the gas springs and finding their mounting positions was a little bit tricky because this unit doesn't hinge at a specific point but rather glides into position. That meant I needed a little bit longer springs that I would normally use. Now to mount them they need to be extended in the stored position and compressed in the using position or the working position. That is how I'm going to achieve the absorption and the assistance when I'm folding it closed. That means that when the unit is closed the extended strut needs to be mounted like this. While in its compressed position I need the strut at a slight incline with the force applied behind this pivot. That means that the force would make the unit want to return to its stored position. Now because the unit is installed up against the wall on the left hand side over here I need to remove the front part of the cabinet to install the mounting brackets for the gas strut on this side. Right guys, so I installed the mounting bracket on a half inch plywood spacer like this just to bring it away slightly so I can get a nut in the back.
so that's the two struts installed and for the bottom mount spacer I used a piece of half inch and three quarter inch pine plywood layered together to bring the entire assembly nice and in line with the already existing pivot. Now if I did my calculations correctly the opening of the unit must be way more controlled because the weight is supported by the struts. Right, so the struts do more or less what I was hoping they would. They prevent the unit from crashing down during an uncontrolled opening. They also support the weight of the unit during the closing process. And once closed, the struts do a great job at keeping it in the upper position, allowing me to use it as a cabinet. Next I need to install a locking mechanism to prevent this from happening unintentionally while I want to use it as a table. To achieve this I'm going to install a very basic locking mechanism at this end over here so that when the unit is down I can latch this over here and secure the table in that way. It doesn't need to be very strong because this distance is a lot bigger than this distance. So to secure the unit in the table configuration I install these bolt type latches at the back on either side. When the sliding component is down these bolt into holes are drilled in the sliding component and so prevent the back from lifting when pressure is applied over here. But because the bolt is latching into a hole drilled in wood I think it will wear out quite quickly. So to better secure it and to prevent it from wearing out I'm going to install washers over the hole and to secure them I drilled two holes so that I can fix them with screws. Okay, so that's the unit locked in the table position, supported in the closed position and protected against crashing down. But the project is still very far from being a complete multifunctional mini workshop. So if you want to see the end result, remember to subscribe. Then before I sign off I wanted to reach out to all of my subscribers. You guys are directly responsible for keeping me motivated and making videos even though it is becoming increasingly difficult to find the time. I wanted to know what you guys think about me adding memberships to my channel. Paid memberships with exclusive benefits is part of my plan to get my channel or my brand to a point where it can become a full time gig or at least where my job becomes a part time one. This would of course be completely voluntary but could potentially mean more regular and better content for you guys. So let me know in the comments down below what you think. Now I know this was a little bit of a filler video so I promise to be back really soon with some more builds and hopefully the last edition on my table saw restoration series. Until then however thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Cheers.